Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm super excited to share with all of you a full face of Kosas makeup. So I'll be running through all of the products that I have from Kosas, giving you guys swatches and a demo of the products, and then sharing my overall thoughts and review of the brand. And so if you're interested in learning more about Kosas, then just stick around. So to start off, in case you're not familiar with Kosas, they are a clean beauty brand and their overall aesthetic is very youthful, glowy, with a little bit of sportiness thrown in. And I wanted to do today's video because I realized that I have over the years accumulated the vast majority of their products and yet I have never done a full face of Kosas on my channel. So here we are today. Some of these products are ones that I use on an everyday basis. Some of these I no longer use. And so I thought it would be fun to just put all of these products together in a video and share with all of you my thoughts and reflections. So without further ado, let's run through these products. So for complexion, I have a mini size of the Kosas Tinted Face Oil, and I have this in the shade 5.5. I have tried another sample of this before though, so this won't be my first impression of the product. I also have a mini of the Kosas Face Powder in the shade Comfy, the Kosas Bronzer in Medium, the Cream Blush and Highlight in Tropic Equinox, the Powder Brush and Highlight in Contra Chroma High Intensity, and then another Blush and Highlight in Papaya 1972. For brows, I have their Brow Pencil in Brown Black, and their brow gel in medium brown. And then I have a bunch of Kosas lip products, two of their wet lip oils in fruit juice and jaws, a full size of their lipstick in undone, and then a mini in rose water, and then their hyaluronic lip balm in the shade Rush. So to start out today's demo, my lips are feeling very dry at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with some of this hyaluronic lip balm. So this is in the Kosas Sport line. I think the main thing that makes this sporty is a combination of the packaging and also this does have a minty menthol taste to it. So you just open the package like this and there is this little thing on the bottom to screw up the product and you can also screw it back down. Let me give you guys a swatch of this shade. So this is Rush and you can see that it's actually a fairly pigmented lip balm. So let's go ahead and get this on my lips. Alrighty, so there is Rush on the lips, and I would say I'm overall a fan of this lip balm. It does provide a pretty nice layer of pigmentation while still being super comfortable on the lips. It's not one of my favorite lip balm formulas though, just because I'm personally not a huge fan of the menthol taste. To me, it kind of tastes like I have some toothpaste in my mouth or on my lips. So if you like that sort of sensation, then this is a really amazing lip balm to try out. But if you're also not a huge fan of that menthol taste, then you might wanna pass on this product. I will say though, the menthol does provide a nice cooling sensation on the lips. And so if your lips are really irritated, that can potentially help. So next up, let's go into this mini tinted face oil. And the shade 5.5 is their medium golden shade. So it might be a little bit deep for me right now in the dead of winter, but this is a pretty sheer coverage product, so hopefully I can make it work. So this is what the product looks like. Let me just give you guys a little bit of a swatch here. But as you can tell, this is a very liquidy consistency. It very much feels like an oil when you first apply it to the skin. And with a damp beauty blender, I'm just going to pounce that into my skin. This is a pretty light coverage product. So if you want some more coverage, it's probably best to go in with a concealer or with a different sort of product. As you can tell, those two to three drops really didn't provide a ton of coverage. So now I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more of this product. And one thing to note is because it is so liquidous, you do wanna be a little bit careful when you pour out this product because it can easily get everywhere if you're not very careful. So while I'm blending this in, let me just tell you guys about my initial impression of this product. So I tried this product a while back, like basically when they first launched, I was pretty intrigued by it. And so I decided to pick up a sample and I would say I wasn't a huge fan of the product the first time I used it 
because when you first put it on, it definitely feels kind of oily, which is not my favorite sensation. Even though I have dry skin, I do prefer my base products to feel more like a cream rather than like an oil. When this does settle down though, it leaves more of kind of a powdery finish, which on the one hand is much better than leaving an oily finish, but I did find that it wasn't necessarily the most flattering effect on the skin. So we'll see, that was a really long time ago, so hopefully today it'll perform a little bit better for me. But just to let you guys know, going into this, I'm not having the highest expectations. I will say though, so far, so good. The shade match is actually a lot better for me than I anticipated. It might just be because this product is so light, but it's looking pretty good on my skin. I don't feel like I need a different shade actually. And so I just have it right now on the right side of my face and the left side of my face has no product. So you can see that with those two layers, it provided maybe a light to light medium coverage. There's definitely no coverage really on my blemish here. So you can still definitely see that loud and clear. But in terms of just any sort of discoloration on my cheeks or on my forehead, I do think it does blur that a bit. So definitely a nice finish for everyday wear. So now let me just do the rest of my face. I will say even with this little bottle here, it is getting super messy. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a lot of product that just kind of leaks out every time you open it. So yeah, that was something I remember not being a huge fan of the first time I tried it. If you guys have the full size of this product, I would be curious to know if you have any issues keeping the bottle clean. Do you have the oil kind of just, you know, sometimes run out and get all over the bottle or are you able to really keep everything looking nice? Because it could just be my problem. <laughs> but at least in this time and the previous time I tried a sample, I do remember messiness being a bit of an issue. It's just basically the most runny complexion product that I've ever tried, so it can be a little bit difficult to keep it in place. So now just going in with a second layer on the side as well. I will say my skin was feeling a little bit dry before I put this on, and so, so far it is enjoying that oily sensation because it feels really nice and hydrated. But let's see how this wears. So here we have the face oil on both sides of my face. And again, I think this is a really nice level of coverage just for an everyday basis. You can still definitely see some of my skin texture and hyperpigmentation and blemishes peeking through. So it doesn't really look like I have a lot of coverage on, but it definitely provided some smoothing effect on the skin. So that is quite nice. At the moment, I would say the finish is quite dewy. You can probably see some of that reflectivity in the light, but I will be setting this in a little bit. So now that we have the first step of the base down, I do not actually have their concealer. That's one of the very few products from Kosas I have not yet tried. It has been on my wish list for a while because I've heard really rave reviews about that product. I've been a little bit on the fence though because the product does contain caffeine and personally I have a pretty strong caffeine sensitivity. It mostly is a problem if I drink any caffeinated beverages, so I'm not sure if it would actually be a problem with a skincare product. If any of you have caffeine sensitivities and have tried the concealer, I would love to hear if you've noticed any adverse effects, but that's why I've kind of been on the fence in terms of whether to pick up that concealer. So in lieu of the Kosas concealer, I'll be going in today with my Tarte Hydra Sealer in the shade Light Medium Honey. Alrighty, so next up, let's go into powder. And this little Kosas powder is actually one of my favorite powders of 2021. But as you can see, unfortunately, it is broken. And that really bummed me out because it broke so easily. It wasn't like I dropped it from any height. It was just like it got shuffled around in my drawer a little bit and somehow just broke within my drawer. So. That was really sad when this happened. I think for today, I'm going to just try to remove this top part that broke and then use the powder underneath. So there we go. This is what it looks like with that top part removed. 
So with my refer number five brush, I'm gonna try to pick up some of this powder from this broken compact. Let's see if this works. This is my first time trying this powder since it broke. So this might be a little bit tricky, but let me just try to really set this base because it is feeling a little bit greasy. I was touching my face just now, and at least so far the product has not really settled down by itself at all. So even though I do like the feeling of a hydrated base, I think because I put two layers on to get a little bit more coverage, it is starting to feel a little bit wet and greasy. So set all of this down. So since this was one of my favorite powders of the year, I have been debating whether to buy it in the full sized version. What I love about this powder is I feel like you really can't go overboard with it. Even though I have pretty dry skin, I find that I can apply multiple layers of this powder without any issue. And for me, that's saying a lot because with a lot of products, what I find is if I'm not really careful with the powder, then my base just gets really, really dry looking. But so far I found this one to be pretty foolproof. This is my first time using these two products together. And one thing I will note is that because the face oil is quite oily, the brush ends up picking up some of those oils and depositing it into the pan. So I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but definitely the pan looks a lot less powdery now. It kinda looks like there's a thin layer of oil on the top. And so I hope that's okay. I mentioned this just because sometimes getting oils in your makeup can lead it to go bad sooner. That's part of why it's really important to clean your brushes so the oils in your face don't end up getting into all of your powder products. But I do think if you use this face oil, it's pretty hard not to get the oil onto your brush. So just wanted to note that. All right, so now looking at the powdered base, I would say I'm overall really enjoying the look. So the powder definitely mattified things without making them look dry. Overall now, I would say my face has more of a satin finish, whereas before it had a very strong dewy finish. It will be interesting though to see how this product wears because touching my face right now, I still do feel a tiny bit of that tackiness and oiliness from the face oil. And previous times when I've tried the face oil without powder, what I really didn't like was that continued feeling of oiliness and tackiness throughout the day. So we'll see. I'll either update you guys at the end of this video or in a pinned comment below. But moving right along, let's talk about the Kosas Bronzer. And so this is a product I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with because when I first got this product, I loved it so much. It was by far my favorite glowy bronzer for a while. The glow in this bronzer doesn't look glittery at all. It just provides a really beautiful, healthy glow to the skin that looks really nice and summery. The hate part though comes in because I only had this product for a few months before it just completely, completely hard panned. So right now it is so hard panned that it's really hard for me even to get a decent swatch for you guys. So let me actually try to swatch this. Okay, there we go. There is a bit of a swatch there. Let me also just fill that up a bit more. But if I get close to it, it definitely smells really strongly of that sort of Crayola crayon smell, which a lot of makeup gets once it's gone rancid. So that's the one thing about this bronzer. I haven't repurchased this yet just because I was so disappointed in how quickly it went bad. It could be that my experience is pretty anomalous, but in some of my previous videos, I did hear from some of you that you also had issues with this bronzer going bad relatively quickly. So I did wanna mention that here. I'm not gonna put this on my face today because it is bad, it smells pretty bad, but hopefully at least in this swatch, you can see that it is a really beautiful bronzer. It looks a little bit deep here, but if you sheer it out, you can definitely get just a really pretty bronzy glow. And actually, before we go on to other cheek products, I just realized I have not done my brows yet. So let's go into that. So other than the powder, my two favorite Kosas products have to be their brow products. 
So as you can hopefully see here, their brow pencil has a pretty thin triangular cross section shape to it. And this is a pretty waxy formula. So as you can see, when I use a light hand, not a ton of product comes off. I can kind of go in with firmer strokes and get something more pigmented. But personally, I like that because I don't like brow products to be super creamy and then just kind of blend all over my brows. I find that it loses its definition in terms of individual hair strokes. So what I've really enjoyed with this product is on the one hand, it draws onto the skin super easily. As you could see, it was very easy for me to just put down a line. So it's not the kind of waxy brow pencil where you have to really dig in order to get any pigment off. But at the same time, because it's not super creamy, you can provide a little bit more definition to your brows and not just have that single color blocked brow look. So there we go. I usually don't like doing my brows live on camera because I usually like to be able to focus on them a little bit more since I'm not necessarily the best at doing my brows. But these products are just so easy to use that I found that I can actually do a brow really quickly. So now for the brow gel, this is what the spoolie looks like. So it's kind of a small to medium sized spoolie. And the texture of this product is quite thick. So this is not gonna be one of those really liquidous products that just gets everywhere on your brows. This will really cling to your brow hairs. And personally, that's what I prefer in my brow products. So there we have a really simple everyday brow. So now let's get into all of these cheek products which will also be doubling up as eyeshadow. So first, I wanted to quickly talk about this cream blush and highlight because this blush over here, which is the Tropic Equinox shade, is one of my favorite blushes of all time. Probably my favorite cream blush. As you guys can see here, it's just a really pretty peachy, rosy tone. Very flattering on an everyday basis. And this is what the highlight looks like. In general, this is looking very monochromatic at the moment. So for a long time, this blush was basically my go-to everyday blush. I love the shade. It's so flattering on my skin tone. It doesn't look really like I have blush necessarily. Usually on an everyday basis, I don't want something really pink and flushed because I don't want to actually look like I'm embarrassed and blushing. I just want to look like there's a little bit of vitality to my cheeks, like I'm awake and healthy. And so this was really perfect for that. It's just a little bit deeper than my skin tone and just adds a really natural shade to my cheek area. And also there's some faint gold shimmers in this blush that also just picked up the light and added a really nice healthy sheen to the look. And also this particular formula is not like one of those blushes that's so sheer, it doesn't provide any coverage at all. This provided a tiny bit of coverage just to even out the skin tone on my cheeks. So that was another aspect that I really loved about this. So unfortunately, I'm saying all of this in the past tense because this product recently went bad on me. So now when I smell it, it smells pretty bad and I can't really put it on my face anymore. This product at least I had much longer though than the bronzer. The bronzer went bad in like a few months, whereas I do think I've had this blush for close to a year at this point. That said, the product does say that it has an 18 month shelf life. So I was a bit disappointed once it went bad. As you guys can probably start to tell already, the general theme of my experience with Kosas has been the products are really wonderful, work super well, but they do have a tendency to go bad or break on you quite easily. So unfortunately, a lot of my favorite Kosas products are either unusable at this point or are broken and difficult to use. So now let's go into these two color and light duos. So let me just start by giving you guys some swatches. So this is Papaya 1972, and this is in their regular intensity formula. And then we have Contra Chroma, which is in their high intensity formula. High intensity basically means there's double the pigment in the formulation. 
So here's the blush for Papaya 1972 and the highlight, and then the blush and highlight for Contra Chroma High Intensity. So you can definitely see that these two are quite a bit deeper than these two. And for me, this highlight is definitely more of either something to mix into the blush or to use as eyeshadow. So since we don't have bronzer, let me first go into the deeper shade in the Contra Chroma palette and then just press this kind of where I would put bronzer, but just a little higher up. I'm gonna keep this on the cheek instead of in the hollows because I do still want this to be a blush. There we go, just kind of giving myself a little bit of dimension there. As you can see, this shade is pretty deep for me, but I do find that this formula blends out quite nicely. There we go. Just a really nice flush. Also just take some of it up as well. Do that kind of bracket effect. So there we have the blush from Contra Chroma High Intensity. And then the way I normally use this palette is actually by dipping into both of these sides and kind of mixing them together because I find that this is far too deep on my skin tone to use by itself, but it's actually a pretty nice blush and mixed together, the shade is quite nice. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just putting this a little bit higher. So also still on the outside portion of my cheeks, but just a little bit higher up since it has that shimmer in it. And I would say this just turns that blush into being a little bit more of a shimmer blush rather than a satin blush. So even if you have a fair skin tone, I would say you can definitely use the high intensity formulations. So there we go, we have a combination of the blush and then the blush and highlight mixed together, just on the outer portions of both cheeks. And now going into the Papaya 1972, I'm gonna go back in with my fluffy refer number five brush and just sweep this on the rest of my cheeks. This is a pretty powdery formula, so the one thing I would caution you about is that there is some kick up in the pan and you can get a decent amount of kick up in the air as well. So just be a little bit careful when you're applying this product. Just putting a little bit of that on my nose as well. So I think as you can see, definitely the Papaya 1972, which is in the regular intensity, is a lot lighter than the high intensity versions. And then going back in with my ABH brush, I'm gonna use this highlighter. I will say I'm not the biggest fan of their highlighter formula. As you can see here, there's like a nice subtle sheen, but it's not that visible, I would say, and you have to apply a pretty decent amount of it to really be able to see anything. So for me, this is not really a go-to highlight. In general, I think it's better to use the highlight in a mixture with the blush, just to make the blush a little bit more shimmery. The highlight by itself really doesn't do a whole lot. But if you're interested in a very subtle powdery highlight, then it might still be worth checking out the formula. And actually speaking of highlight, I realized I never actually talked about this cream highlighter. I went on and on about how much I love the blush. The cream highlighter I would say is fine. It's not my favorite. I personally don't really like cream highlighters because they often leave a sticky finish on the skin. And this one is not necessarily super sticky, but it also doesn't really dry down. So you will, if you ever touch your face during the day or if you have hair blow into your face, there will still be enough of a slip and tackiness there for hair to get stuck. So I don't really like this highlighter that much, but I absolutely love this blush. So now with the cheeks done, let's go in with the eyes. So I don't have the 10 second shadows from Kosas because I really do not like liquid shadows. And so for today, I'm just gonna use these blush highlight duos as eyeshadow. And to apply my eye makeup today, I wanted to try these new brushes from Complex Culture, which I got in my Ipsy Glam Bag this month. So to start, I'm gonna go in with this all over shadow brush, which looks like a pretty standard blending brush. And I'm gonna go into this papaya shade and just kind of put this all over the lid. This is kind of that mid-tone shade. So I'm gonna mostly concentrate this in the crease, but also just kind of sweep it all over. Hopefully this also helps to just set my lid area. This is a really pretty shade actually. 
This would be a nice one and done look if you want to do just a really simple eyeshadow. Of course, often blushes don't necessarily have the same lasting power as eyeshadow or they tend to crease during the day because they do sometimes have more oils in the formulation than eyeshadows do. But this is really pretty. I am liking how easily and smoothly this applies to the lids. And also using blush as eyeshadow is a pretty nice hack if you want a really simple look where your cheeks will definitely <laughs> match your eyes. And then while we're at it, let me just also put some of this on the lower lash line. All right, there we go. So now to deepen things up, I wanna go in with this Easy Crease Definer. And this is a really interestingly shaped brush. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. It's actually a triangle in cross section, which is really interesting. I've never used a brush that has a triangular cross section before. So let me use this with this deeper blush shade over here. And let's see if this is good at defining that crease area. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not really sure that I'm a huge fan of this triangular shape. It's not necessarily giving me like that kind of diffused crease look that I usually like. I mean, just also use this to pull some of the shadow onto the lower lash line in the outer thirds. Maybe this would be good if you really want to keep this shadow more so near the lash line. I feel like this shape kind of lends itself towards that. But yeah, I don't wanna say this is necessarily an easy crease brush. So actually I'm gonna go back into that bigger brush now and just use this to kind of diffuse some of the edges. So now I'm going in with this precision eyelid brush. And for this, I'm gonna take that highlighter shade from the Contra Chroma palette and just sweep that all over the lid area. I do like the triangle at the front of this one. I think it makes it easier to get into that inner corner area. And now with my reference number 14, I'm going into the lighter highlight in the papaya palette and using this as inner corner highlight, kind of actually gonna sweep this sort of all over the inner third because I feel like we could use a little bit more light in this look. And then also using this as brow bone highlight. As you can probably tell, there's not a lot of glow in this, so you can definitely pack on the layers without worrying about looking really like you have a lot of shine. Also just take some of that on the lower lash line. And actually going back in with that lid shade, let me take a little bit of this shade as well, just kind of on the side of this brush and sweep it along the lower lash line in the inner two thirds. So I went off camera to do my eyeliner and today I have the Ico Black Magic Eyeliner on. This is a brown shade in their Coco Edit. And then on my waterline, I put my Wayne Goss eyeliner. I have this in the shade Tiger's Eye, which is one of his newer shades. So you can see here that it's a pretty dark brown, but it has a little bit of shimmer in it. So now to finish off this full face of Kosas, let's go into the lip products. So I have quite a few lip products from Kosas, so let's do some lip swatches of all of them. So first off, of course, we have the current shade on my lips, which is Rush in their Lip Balm formulation. Really pretty rosy berry shade. Next, I'm gonna go into Rose Water in their lipstick formula. So this is actually pretty similar to Rush in Tone. So this is a really nice neutral pink on me. I think on some of you this might run more as a warm pink, but this is a really great everyday shade if you like pink lipstick. This does have a slight fragrance to it. It's that sort of vanilla flavor. So I personally am a fan of that. Next we have Undone in their normal lipstick size. So this is more of their nude pink shade. So it's a little bit deeper than Rose Water or Rush, and it has a little bit more brown in it in comparison to the other two. I think this is also a really lovely everyday shade, and it's great especially if you're not really wearing any other makeup, but you want something on your lips that will just bring a little bit more life and color to your look. Next, let's go into these wet lip oils. 
So first we have the bright red shade in Jaws. And here we have Jaws on the lips. And it's actually been a while since I used this product, but this was also one of my OG favorites from Kosas. So as you can tell, this leaves a really juicy, hydrated finish on the lips. If you build this up, you can actually get pretty decent opacity as if you had put on a lipstick and lip balm. What I have on at the moment is two layers of the gloss. I would say from a distance, this primarily just looks really juicy. If you look up close though, you can definitely see there are some shimmer particles in this formula, but the shimmer is very fine. So this is not going to feel sandy when you rub your lips together. It is a really nice, smooth formulation. I will say though, when I put this on, it did smell a little bit off to me. So I might have to put this in my set of Kosas products that I no longer use because they have unfortunately gone bad. Still really beautiful though. Next we have fruit juice, which is more of a plummy color. So here we have fruit juice on the lips. For some reason, I always find that this one looks a little bit more sheer than Jaws. I don't know if it's just the shade, but I have noticed that in the past wearing this as well. So this is a really great shade if you want something that's a little bit more cool toned. Unfortunately, like Jaws, this also has a weird scent at the moment, so I definitely need to retire these products, but you can see it still looks really pretty. The finish and effect of this product isn't any different than how I remember it when it was fresh. So those are all the lip swatches. I'm gonna take this off now and put back on Undone since this product is probably expired. And I think Undone is the shade that looks the best with today's look anyway. And just as a reminder of all of these, this is Rush in the lip balm, Rose Water in the lipstick, Undone, which is a lipstick, and then Jaws and Fruit Juice in the Wet Lip Oil. So here we have the final look, a full face of Kosas makeup. What do you guys think? So with the demo and swatches out of the way, let's just run through my overall thoughts and impressions about Kosas as a brand. So first and foremost, I'll say that overall, I really enjoy Kosas as a brand. All of their products, when used fresh, look really nice on the skin. The performance is impeccable. You don't feel like you're missing out on anything because it's clean beauty. And some of their products have definitely become my everyday staple favorite products. That said, my biggest problem with Kosas as a brand is the longevity of the products. Of course, I understand with clean beauty, part of the point is that they don't use some of the same preservatives as other makeup brands. And as a result, their products are not necessarily gonna be as long lasting. But for me personally, that just makes them not really fit super well in my makeup routine because I do like trying new products. I do like going back and forth between different products. So it is quite hard for me to ever finish up any products, especially if I only have around a year to do so. So to quickly run through my impressions of each of the products. So I would say starting out today, I would have definitely said that my least favorite product in this line by far is the tinted face oil. I really did not enjoy my previous experiences with the face oil because I felt that it just never really set down and was greasy and tacky throughout the day. Today with the powder on top, I would say that it is looking pretty nice. This is definitely my best experience ever with this face oil. It's been around an hour since I applied the face oil and I think it's looking really nice and healthy on the skin. It's providing me that light coverage with that really beautiful skin-like satin finish. That said, when I touch my face, I do feel like a little bit of oil comes off. So I'm still not a huge fan of that aspect. I think this face oil is really good if your face is not really going to be brushing up against anything. So you're indoors, there's no wind blowing your hair into your face and you don't have a mask or anything touching your face. I would be pretty wary about wearing this face oil on days when you need a little bit more sticking power, but the finish is really beautiful. In terms of the brow products, I have said many great things about this already, so I'll keep it brief. These are some of my favorite brow products. Would highly, highly recommend these. Similarly for the face powder, 
really gorgeous face powder if you have dry skin like myself and you often find yourself having to be super careful with applying face powder because it just leaves your makeup dry and cakey this is definitely a good product to try out. At least in my experience, it is really easy to use, sets your makeup, leaves a really beautiful satin finish, but doesn't dry out your skin. In terms of the bronzer, it's honestly a little bit hard for me to say. I do love this formulation, and while it worked, I think it was really beautiful on my skin, but to me, it was just unacceptable how quickly it went bad. So if you buy this bronzer, maybe keep it in a really temperature controlled environment and be really careful not to use it with really oily products like the Kosas face oil because you might find this becoming hard panned really quickly. In terms of the blushes and highlights, this is actually one of the few times I actually prefer the cream version. In particular, I just love this cream blush formulation so much and this particular shade. The powders, as you could see today, are pretty nice as well, but they're really nothing to write home about. Given a choice between the Kosas Powder Blush and Highlight and my other powder blushes and highlights from Pat McGrath, Patrick Ta, NARS, all of those brands, I would much prefer those to these. This cream blush, though, has beat out pretty much every other cream blush that I've tried. The combination of formula and shade has just been so perfect for me. So if you have been looking for that perfect everyday cream blush and you have a similar complexion to me, I would highly suggest checking this out. I do wish though they sold this separate from the highlight because I'm not a huge fan of that one. With the powder blush and highlights, I think these are fine, but there's a lot of kick up in the pan when you use them. It's a very powdery formula. And also, I just don't like the highlighters. I find that it's not that really beautiful, subtle sheen, but it's also not a really shiny highlight. It's kind of just powdery and meh. It doesn't really give you that much. In a way, I almost prefer the high intensity version because at least then I can use this as a blush or as a blush supplement along with this guy. Whereas in the Papaya 1972, there's not really a use case that I enjoy for that highlighter. The one other thing I'll mention with these duos is I wish they had a different terminology rather than calling these high intensity and then the other ones are just the normal ones. It implies that folks with lighter skin tones can use just normal, regular products, whereas folks with deeper skin tones need something specific, which is called high intensity. So personally, I would have preferred light and dark or some other sort of name such that there isn't some implication that one of them is the normal one. In terms of the lip products, many of these Kosas lip products used to be loves for me, but I would say nowadays they're more in the like category just because they have a hard time competing with a lot of the other lip products that I love. If you're curious what I'm talking about, definitely check out my best of 2021 lip products video where I go into my favorite lipsticks, lip balms, so on and so forth. But just to evaluate these on their own merits, I would say the lip balm is really nice. I do really enjoy this formula. I would say of all of these formulas, it's the one that stays the most hydrating over the course of the day, which makes sense because it's a hyaluronic lip balm. The only thing I don't like about this is that menthol taste. For the lipsticks, now that I've had this lipstick on for a little while, I'm reminded why I don't wear these more often. So these feel really amazing when you first apply them to the lips. They're super creamy and comfortable, but as the day wears on, they do tend to dry out my lips. I don't know if you guys can see, but definitely my lip lines are getting emphasized and that's just because they are drying out. And so that's why I don't really wear these that often. I find that a lot of other lip products I have do not do that while still providing a really nice, creamy, opaque lipstick effect. So these are just so-so in my book. Finally, for the lip oils, I actually really like the effect that these leave. If you want a really high shine, juicy lip, then these are an impeccable formula. And these are pretty comfortable throughout the day. I personally haven't been reaching for these very much recently just because I haven't really been going for that really glossy high shine lip. Also, these two shades are just not shades I've been gravitating to a lot recently. 
but I would recommend the formula with the caveat that they might not last the full 18 months. So that's it for today's video. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If you guys have tried Kosas products, I would love to hear in the comments below what your thoughts have been. Do you have a favorite product or were there any products that didn't quite work out for you? And also let me know how you like these sorts of brand review videos. I haven't been super interested in a lot of the new releases so far this year, and so I found myself digging into my old stash and thinking about new looks and videos that I can do with my existing products. So let me know if you're interested in this format. But thanks again so much for joining me today, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!